recently I participated in a panel here at the seminary uh, with three of my colleagues on ministry in the Spirit and, per and particularly ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I commented in that panel that this was the sort of kind thing we could have never done here at Asbury when I was a student at the seminary back in the 1970s because back then we were much we were very worried about being too closely identified with uh, Pentecostals and charismatics um, and neither could we have done a panel like this in the 1990s uh, because at that time we weren't really aware yet of what was going on in the global church as a whole. Uh, and, our, and our own Dr. Craig Keener uh, hadn't written his massive, magnificent two-volume work on miracles, uh, charting all the things that God is doing around the world and all the miraculous signs and wonders and evidences of the power of the Spirit everywhere. Um, so this, this is something wonderful and new that's going on right now in, in our midst. But uh, I challenged us in that panel that actually this was a time when uh, we needed to be not less Wesleyan, but more Wesleyan than we've been in the past. Um, and I believe we've, we have in John Wesley uh, someone who can really help us as we, as we seek to be more open to the power of the Spirit, to the manifestations of the Spirit uh, in these days, to signs and wonders and the miraculous and the supernatural kinds of things uh, that sometimes uh, happen when the Spirit comes in power. Uh, we have uh, in Wesley, I think, someone that can really help us. And, uh, I recommended a book, uh, a recent book called Methodism and the Miraculous by Robert Webster, uh, actually published by our own Asbury Theological Seminary series in Christian Revitalization. Um, and uh, this is a wonderful book because it, it focuses on Wesley and the early Methodists and what he was doing and, and his openness to the supernatural um, in his day. Um, but I suggested that we can learn a lot from Wesley when it comes to the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit, uh, particularly um, in, in, in two areas. First of all, in, in considering John Wesley's rich, robust uh, pneumatology, his theological understanding of the Holy Spirit that we find particularly in his sermons and uh, some of his theological writings. And what we, what we discover is that Wesley's uh, uh, understanding of the Holy Spirit was not limited to uh, the power of the Spirit, what we might think of as the gifts of the Spirit and the more miraculous manifestations of the Spirit, but uh, it's rooted in his doctrine of the Trinity, it's rooted in the uh, ancient creeds of the church, uh, when the church said that the Holy Spirit was the Lord and giver of life and with the Father and the Son was to be worshiped and glorified. Uh, Wesley's rooted in the history and the doctrine of the church. Uh, and then his pneumatology is, is, is rooted deeply in his, un, in his order of salvation as he spells out the work of the Spirit uh, in the new birth and in, particularly in sanctification. Um, but um, the other piece of Wesley that's important for us is uh, what we find in his journals. And um, here we see Wesley going around from place to place and being a pastor and, and preaching and uh, oftentimes encountering manifestations of the Spirit uh, uh, and seeing these things happen right in front of his eyes. And here's where I think he can really be uh, someone that helps us a lot. Uh, what we find is that Wesley in one sense was radically open to the Spirit. Uh, when things like this happened, he didn't seek to necessarily shut them down or stop them from happening. So he was open to the Spirit. He was definitely not a cessationist. He did believe that the gifts of the Spirit were supposed to extend uh, way beyond the church age till the time to come. But uh, the other piece in Wesley 
that's really important is that he was not only radically open to the Spirit, but re responsibly open to the Spirit. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't encourage manifestations of the Spirit, but he didn't forbid manifestations. The main thing he did, however, was he sought to judge them and to see if they, in fact, produced good fruit in people's lives. So if they, in, if they made people love Jesus more, if they produced in someone a greater desire uh, for, the different, for the means of grace, the uh, reading of scripture, if, if and above all, they caused people to grow in a passion for holiness, then Wesley was open to and was appreciative of manifestations of the Spirit. Uh, he always sought to judge them by their fruits, but he was open to them. And uh, I believe he serves then as a great model for us. And I would encourage you uh, to study Wesley and to learn of Wesley even more. Uh, we, we need to go back to Wesley here on this as never before. Uh, and uh, so that's what I've learned as I've been on this journey myself, that we have in our own heritage a lot that we can turn to to help us in this regard. Thank you.